Next part. When it comes to role based security group, a role based security works on organization level. Now, what do you understand or what do you mean by organization level? To create a group, right? Uh, I'll tell you. The first step is not, no, no. The first step is not to create a group. The first step will be to create a role. Role, right? Okay. Okay. So that role then, will have the access, right? Uh, no. The role will have no. the field access or how? No. You will Again. Show that. No, again, don't get confused. I have not shown you the process, okay? okay? But if you are asking about the process, the first thing is the role has to be created. Mm -hmm. Then you create a role-based security group. Correct. And then you assign the permissions to the role-based security group. Okay. 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 So this is the, uh, you know, process. Yeah. But right now, I'm not talking on that. What I'm trying to tell you is a role-based security group works on organization level. Yeah. And what is this organization level? Different department. Different department. Okay, that's fine. Anything else apart from departments? You, you, you use the Workday terminology. So what do we have as a department in Workday? Supervisory, supervisory organization. organization. Supervisory organization. Yeah. Okay. Organization level means different departments and department here it's supervisory organization. Absolutely correct. What about others? I, I give you an example in the beginning of an accountant, right? So what is the accountant's role? What would an accountant do? Manage financial uh, data. Financial transactions or data. And how will they get access to that? Through security. They will need a cost center data. They will need a various kind of reports. They will only need cost center data. Okay. To how, where is the finance captured? Finance uh, details are captured in? Cost center. Cost center. That's what we learned. That we create cost centers because our data is captured in that. Correct. Yeah. So if our data is captured in a cost center, then we can't do anything. We will have to give the access of the cost centers to the accountant. Then only they will be able to perform their day-to-day -day activity. So what is a cost center? It is a predefined organization. Yes. Right? Yeah. So according to the roles and responsibilities, guys, you need to ensure you are only giving that access which is required. If you're giving access of supervisory organization to an accountant, then that is a wrong assignation. You cannot do it. They will be able to make the changes in the supervisory organization. Are they allowed to do it? No. 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 Right. Yeah. So you have to be very specific when you have to give the permissions. And as I stated, you are giving a permissions on the roles. Basically, what is that person going to do in the organization, right? So as per that, you will give the options to perform only on the organization level. So a role is enabled for organization, whether it is predefined, custom or supervisory. It does not matter, but a role will be assigned on that. Okay. 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 Does it make sense? Yes. You see this option, role-based security group. It works on organization level. Now, what are the organizations? I have predefined organization, region, cost center, location, company, and their hierarchy, custom organization, and supervisory organizations. Okay. So yes. if I have to create a role, I will have to mention that I'm creating this role for which type of organization. Okay. okay. That is what you have to remember. Now, someone asked me, that what is the process? How do we actually go ahead and create a role or a security group, right? So the first step is if I have to create a role-based security group, I have to go ahead and first of all, create a role, okay? We'll come to the user-based security group in some time, but let's first understand the role-based security group. See, so let's create a security group which will have the HR partner permissions, which will be there. So access to compensation, personal information, right? Now, what will happen? The role-based security group is applied on an organization level. Now, there are steps. We have to remember that. Mm -hmm. 
the first step is we have when we create when we have to create a role based security group we'll have to first of all create a role okay then we will create a role based security group the third step is assign the role to that security group and then you assign the permissions to that security group clear to everybody yes yes okay do you want me to configure it today or you want me to basically explain you user based security group also and then configure it how do you want to go ahead yeah but it's really complete user based i guess will be clear or no Okay. I mean, anyways, I have to start both, right? So that's the reason I'm asking you, yeah. because we are left with hardly ten minutes. So if I start the configuration of role-based uh, security group, it will not finish in ten minutes. It will take approximately twenty twenty-five minutes. So better to explain about user-based security. Group. Uh, yeah. Let's understand the user-based security group, and then tomorrow when we meet, we will again, you know, start with role-based only. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. guys we understood right the role based security groups works on organization level now organization level could be anything predefined custom or supervisory okay mm -hmm. so you have yeah. to define the organization mm -hmm. where my role is going to perform that activity okay so if you have defined it correctly then there will be no challenges absolutely everything will be smooth if the permissions are defined wrong there could be a lot of escalations imagine that someone is able to change the compensation data for other employees yeah what will happen someone can lose the job yes right Correct. right yeah right so these are very sensitive changes that we do so we have to be very much sure what are we doing okay then comes the next option which is user based security group now this has more powers okay so user based security group works on tenant level now you saw that a role based security group works on organization level you have to define that okay this role is only restricted to this particular organization whether it is company call center region supervisory organization whatever it is but when you create a user based security group a user based security group works on tenant level now what do you mean by tenant level what does this word tenant you know understands you you know what comes in your mind when you just think of this word tenant tenant nothing but application subscription tenant basically means the complete application yeah the workday system yes right yeah which means you are not restricted to one organization mm -hmm. you are free to move anywhere on that tenant like the way we are moving right i am able to create supervisory organization also i am able to go ahead and make the changes in the permissions also i am able to create compensation also all these things we are able to do right yeah yes. so which means my permissions are user based permissions it works on tenant level now i can go ahead and see any data which i am supposed to see but there will be restrictions there also that i cannot go ahead and see anybody's personal data it will be basically masked mm -hmm. okay so there are options in workday uh, you know there they what do people do in their organization they mask the uh data so you uh, you would have seen that you know when you look into somebody's uh, bank account details you may only see the last three digits other things are you know star 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 yeah. star right yes. so those things are also uh, done in the organization just to make sure that the security is not violated and they it is not done directly on the work day you you get certain extra tools which the company you know uh, buys to perform those activities so that is basically called a kind of masking so when a user based security group is created it is basically it is work it works on tenant level so anybody who is assigned with the user based security group which means that person knows everything in workday generally otherwise you will not get a user based security group you will only get a role based security group even the developers get a role based security group 
you know, the Workday consultants. They are also not given user-based security group. Why? Because you cannot go into every place. Sometimes you have seen that we are also restricted. Like I was not getting the uh, permission to move workers when we were going into the reorganization. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because not everything has been given to me also. Then there are certain restrictions. So in the user-based security group also, I can restrict people only through that way by which I can assign the permission. But if a user-based security group is assigned, they are more powerful. They are way more powerful than anybody who has got a role-based security group. Yeah, yeah, I will tell you. So when I say user-based security group, it works on tenant level. Now, when I say tenant level, somebody who can make the changes inside the tenant, who can make the setup changes, who can actually go ahead and move into any okay. part of the tenant, like what we are doing right now. I'm able to create compensation also. I'm able to create organizations also. I'm able to create job profiles also. But I still have restrictions. I cannot make changes everywhere, which means my user group Maybe my, my security group, which has been assigned, they also have a user-based security group, but they have not given the complete access. So the complete access is given okay. only to security administrators, guys. Somebody who knows Workday okay. in and out, somebody who can fix issues in case nobody is able to do okay. it. So those are very specific people and you will not have two to three or maybe two or three security administrators in an organization. You will not have a huge number of security administrators. Now, in a way you can understand that you, you know, when you work in an organization, right? So let's say your laptop that you have been, you know, you that have been assigned to you from the organization, right? So hmm. what happens in that? That your system crashes. Let's say uh, your Microsoft Office is not working yeah. anymore. What would you do? You need to contact the admin, like a IT, IT, yeah. Yeah, IT, IT help desk IT. or you know admin help desk. Who is going to take care of that, right? Yes. What did what do they do? They will come to you if you are in office. If you are not in office, they will ask, "Can you give me a remote access to your system?" Right. Correct. And yeah. what they will do? They will log in as their employee. They will log in as a system administrator and they will go ahead and install the application and it will start working fine. And they will say, okay, is there anything else I can help you with? You say, no, they disconnect and they go away. They will not even ask you for your username and password. Correct? Yeah. So, so how, how are they controlling it? They are controlling it through their permissions because they are the administrators Absolutely. who have access to each and every system of the company. Similarly, this user-based security group is also like that. If you are assigning somebody a user-based security group, like I'm using proxy, right? You have seen that sometimes I use a work yeah. as Logan, sometimes I work as Adam, sometimes as Steve. Why? Yes. Because I have that permission, I can switch. The same thing is are given to you also, mm -hmm. right? So these permissions are only the way by which you can make the changes. And that's the reason it is given to everybody the way they want to use it. And that's a reason user-based security groups are more powerful because it is not restricted to a particular organization, but it is on the tenant. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So now is the time to actually define, you know, how we go ahead and uh, define uh, both the security groups. User-based is very simple. You just have to create the user-based and then you have to make sure that it is administered by somebody because if you don't admin you know make it administered by somebody that means that person is the most powerful person if in the workday tenant they can make any changes and you cannot control it also are you getting the point yeah so we will see how to control that and how do we create a role-based security okay but for that purpose first of all i'll have to create a role now we have got four minutes and uh so i'll just explain you the steps guys you know to create a role there is a task called maintain assignable role and there are three mandatory things that we have to do there 
so whatever role you are creating you have to put the name of the role let's say i'm creating a hr executive role okay so as per the role what will a hr executive do you have to think tell me what will hr executive do hr executive will do all uh, uh, activities um, uh, hr related like from recruitment to recruitment to uh, exit i mean into yeah. the hire to fire you are saying yeah, right so where are where are these activities done which is that organization where it will be done because you have to think about the organization yeah. there yeah. so where is that organize which is the organization where you will perform these kind of activities hr department <laughs> no no hr department is where they will be joining but wow. their day to day activity will be defined to some organization right yes yeah so which is that organization which is a type of organization i'm not saying department which is that type you have to tell me the type as you have company content yeah, it could be it could be any any yeah. organization yeah that is it that is the name of the department but if you have to use the workday terminology for the department what will that be which type of organization supervisory so, supervisory organization guys so that is what i need to know yeah yeah so if you are giving a permission to hr executive you will give the permission of supervisory organization yeah yeah will, right so yes. they will be able to create a position in the supervisory organization they will be able to hire somebody in a supervisory organization they will yes. be able to terminate somebody yes. right yeah. so what does that mean i am going to give the permission of a supervisory not a, but all the supervisory organizations and yeah. then wherever you are going to assign that hr they will be limited to that supervisory it's not that they will be you know uh, moving ahead in all the supervisory organizations no mm -hmm. yeah okay so that is where you have to identify the type of organization which you will be assigning it and then who can assign these roles because you are creating a role so you need to have that person also right who will be assigning these roles so by default what we do is we put security group there as mm -hmm. security administrator because any changes you are doing in the security it has to be done by security administrator only you cannot do it by yourself right okay yes so that is also important yeah. to understand okay guys so i'll not take much of your time now it is all about the configuration so hopefully tomorrow we will be able to complete the configuration also right then so for today i think we can conclude it but hopefully tomorrow we will be able to wrap up the security which is your data security action security is still is there we we will not be able to complete it in just one day it will take some time if if you have understood data security action security will take a hardly 30 minutes not even that maybe 15 20 minutes itself okay. because the process is same okay okay so yeah. i will be taking your leave now